Hi viewers and welcome to the channel and today we're looking at the previous video that I did and actually following up on some questions regarding that. So the question that was asked was how do you create some offset for the slots that we created in here. Now from the previous video what we did was we took all these profiles which have been positioned. So this one here is the strut and we can transform that out out of the way. So this is just basically a sketch for a strut and these are all profiles. So we took all these extrudes, clicked on one, shift clicked the end one here. So we've got all those extrudes or we can control click them from here like so and we'll just finish it off up here. So all those are selected and then we made this much easier to deal with by going to part and compounding the objects together using make compound. So these act as one now. So I can take my strut, transform it into place, transform, bring this up into place. And I want to create a slot in here into these profiles and into the strut. And we can take the compound, the one we want to keep, the one we want to remove, which is the strut and use a make a cut of two shapes. And that cuts those in there. Now the thing that was asked, if we bring back that strut, is that if we look at this, there's not much clearance there. So how do we create a bit of clearance in here, a bit of offset in here? And the same with these, these profiles. How do we make the clearance for the profile that goes in here if we want to change the offset in here? There's a number of ways of doing it. The first way is I'm just going to delete that cut a second to get back to the original compound and the strut is to create a 3D offset. Now we can't create a 3D offset with a compound. Come up to part, 3D offset with that one. If I try to hit OK, I'm going to get an error because it's a compound object. We have to do that with individual objects. So this is perfect for the actual strut itself. So we can click on the strut, come up to the part, come over to the 3D offset, and you can see that's created a 3D offset. So it's a one millimeter offset each side. We've got an arc on these sides, which we don't want. So drop this down to intersection and hit OK. That's created that offset there. And if I click on that offset inside, you'll see the original strut extrude, which we can still use Though it's embedded in there, we can still use that. If I click on the strut and we'll come down to, normally it's on the data tab, but we want the view tab, the object style and the transparency, which is going to look inside there so we can see what's going on. You can see the original strut in there. Let's come into the offset and I'm just going to hide that strut by clicking on it, pressing the space bar. That's hidden. And we'll click on the offset, just bring transparency down a bit. So we can actually see that there. We use this as the cutting object now. So click on the compound, the one we want to keep, control click the offset, and then use the cut. I'm gonna use the toolbar this time, make a cut of two shapes. And we create the cut there with that offset. Inside the new cut object, we can open that up, come into the offset and go back to the original strut extrusion this one here and you can see how much clearance we've got now going into that. Remember the same thing applies if I move this strut, transform this and move it inwards like so and hit OK, then this will recompute and that slot will recompute. So we may want to take that strut and make a clone of this before we start creating these slots. So instead of using the original strut, we can actually make a clone. And that's easy, come over to the draft workbench and create a clone by modifications and clone. And then we've got this clone, which we can transform out. And keep off to one side. So we've still got this allowing us to cut this object or 3D print it at a later date. Let's 
going to get rid of that in a second. And remove the offset. Break out the cut and also remove the cut. So we're back to square one with the compound. How do we add these slots to the extrude, but allow for some gap so we can offset it inside here? So we're doing the reverse. So we need to deal with this strut. There is a number of options. We can't use a 3D offset because if I try to click on the compound and use the part workbench, come up to the part 3D offset and try the same in here. If I hit OK, we'll get an error. So we need to do something differently. We could use an extrude against the original object. So we extrude these again. So we've got this one, which will be our fins or our profiles. Then what we do, we'll click on the extrude. And from here, we go back to the originals, which for me are these here. Loft 1, Loft CS2, Loft CS3. They may be sketches for you, but these are mine. And if I come into the model, look at the compound, look at one of these extrudes, you see you've got Loft CS7, Loft CS4, because I've created these from cross sections. So if that's the case, what I can do is it would have been handy if when I did the extrude on these, all of these here, that I had them symmetrical. If I actually come back in, let's hit task and close that and make those symmetrical. It's going to break out the compound. Actually, I don't need to break out the compound. I just need to select all these extrudes, control select them or even collapse them up and shift select them. So we've selected all those extrudes. These are all the extrudes of this compound. We can come into the data and update these as one. So we come down, look at the symmetrical, set this to true, see the shift. And if I bring back some of these lofts, you can see loft CS. So this is a cross section from original loft. You can see how that's sitting in there like so. So it's sitting in the middle. This means that I can take all those sections again and extrude them once more. Now we've extruded each of these sections by three millimeters. So we've got three millimeters extrude. So what do we do? So we can come in, make sure nothing's selected, use the extrude and we can go and find those extrudes again. Scroll down to the bottom and we've got these Loft CS0. These will be sketches if you've used sketches to create these profiles. And I'm gonna come down and just shift select the bottom one. So all those are selected. Make sure symmetrical or symmetric is on. And we can go something like eight millimeters there. And also we must make sure that we've selected a axis. So we want it along the Y. So click Y on custom direction. So we're moving up from the bottom Y and make sure that's set to one. Now come down and we just check through. We've got all those there and hit okay. And we've created another extrude in there. So I hide that compound. You can see that extrude is there. At the moment it's not solid, so I need to come in and it's a case of highlighting all those extrude. Coming down, make sure the solid is true. Those are solid now. And then we can do the same. We can take those extrudes Shift click them. So we've got all those selected now and create them as a compound. So part, compound, make compound. So we've got two extrudes of the offshoot, one slightly bigger. Now we can take our strut, what we want to keep and control click the compound and make the cut. 
So now we've got this. And if we look back at the original compound, there's the gap that we need in there. And we can come in and look at the cutting compound and just highlight all of those extrudes length forwards just change these as one control r and you can see how that's refreshed so let's bring this down a bit more so four control r and we're getting that offset in there a little bit of offset that goes around there If the extrudes don't work, so let's get rid of the cut. Now, which compound was it that we want to keep? Don't want that one. So we've got our original set for these extrudes. Let's get rid of these, so we don't want them anymore. So we've got our original there. If we have in problems and we can't actually create Strews from here, we can actually create something called a face binder. And we come over to the draft workbench and I'm gonna select the faces that I want to extrude. So we're gonna put some angle on here and click each of these faces. So this face here, control click the next one and work our way through. Come up and use this object. Also available from drafting face binder. Now if I hide that compound you can see what's happened. We've extracted out the face to those. This can be extruded. So come back to the part workbench, click on the face binder, hit extrude and then we can pick a custom direction. So why? Now we have to be careful of where we want to go because if we come back to the model and look at the compound, we can see that that face binder is here. So we need to go actually forward and backwards. So we need to go in two directions. The so face binder sits on that face. Let's come back to the task. We want it going along the Y. So custom direction of Y. And we've got a long length to extrude along direction can be negative and this against length to extrude against direction can be negative so we're going two ways so forget what the original extrude was so that's say along six and against eight don't need it symmetrical because it's going to be symmetrical because it's a single face anyway so now hit OK. And you can see I've gone a bit too far there, but we can come into that extrude and it's one single extrude which we can modify. Length forwards. And I can modify this by pressing the down arrow, pressing Control R on the keyboard. And you can see we're moving this in the direction to allow us to add some offset in there. Once you're happy, we now got a single extrude. Let's get rid of that compound. We can now use that extrude against our object. So click in the one we want to keep, which is the strut. Control click in the one we want to remove and using the cut or part boolean cut. Let's bring back the original compound and see how that sits in there. So you can see we've got some gapage between those. And that sits in there with a bit of offset to allow to accommodate for these profiles. So this will also work if you have like a curved sketch like this. It's exactly the same. Click on the sketch, create the extrusion, 
hit OK. And then we can create an offset against extrusion 10 part. Come over to the 3D offset. And that creates that 3D offset, change that intersection. And we can offset that against the original extrude and use that as the cutting object. The same with the shape finder. If I cancel that, so we create no offset, we can use one of these faces. So I can use this face, come over to the face binder on the draft workbench, use the face binder or come up to drafting face binder to pull that face out. Let's hide the original extrude. So we've got that face there. We can pad this or extrude it as it would be called in the part workbench. But before we do that, if we this is if we get into any problems, we can instead use a part, come over to the 2D offset, see what's happened there. Got one millimeter all the way around the outside of there. And we can up that if we so desire for two millimeters. Yeah, okay. Let's hide that 2D offset and you can see what's happened there. Inside the 2D offset, we've got the face binder still visible. Just hide that. And now we can take the 2D offset and extrude that instead. And we'll extrude that along the Z axis. The moment it's going minus. So that's make that positive and see where that takes us. That takes us up. So we can either move that down or we can come into the extrude. Reverse the length or come into direction. Z. Jump into here and put a minus in there. That brings it down. So now we can use that as our cutting to place slots along the actual profiles all the way along here. So that's a way to offset those buttons and also offset those profiles to allow for a bit of a gap there. So I hope that's answered those questions. I wish I put that into the other video because it would be made that more coherent with everything that's going on in there. But I hope that's answered those questions for you and I hope to see you again soon. If you like what you're seeing, please subscribe to the site. I also have a Ko-Fi or a coffee site that you can donate to if you so desire. And that's at ko-fi.com forward slash mang0. I also run a Patreon where you can subscribe and get extra content. And that's at www.patreon.com forward slash mango jelly solutions. Any money that's kindly donated will be used to expand the channel. Thanks a lot for watching and subscribing, and I'll see you again soon.